Hello crafty friends! My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl, and it is time for the monthly Oh So Inspired collaboration. I hope you'll stick around, see who inspired us this month, see what I'm going to create, and find out how you can hop along to all of the other talented artists who are joining me. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring the bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. If you're new to my channel or new to the Oh So Inspired collaboration, what we do each month is stop by and using the same inspiration piece, which I'll tell you about here in just a minute, we create something new based upon it. We could take the layout of it. We could try to totally recreate it. We could turn it into a tag. As you hop along today, you're going to see so many different creations, and it's always fun to see how that original inspiration piece has inspired them all. Once I get into the process of my card, I will tell you all about the collaboration, how you can hop along and play along. So make sure to keep watching. But now I do want to tell you who inspired us this month. That is Amy Saruta, who is at Crafty One on Instagram. And the cards that we're taking inspiration from are up on screen now. I will have her Instagram account as well as these cards directly linked in that description box below. I hope that you'll go check them out and find out more about those original pieces. The things that stood out to me about this card and what I'm taking inspiration from today is that mug image and that kind of triangular shape in the background right behind it. So I'm going to use some different themes, some different stamps, but I think by the end you'll know how I was inspired. In front of me are the main supplies I'll be using today and I'll talk more about them as I make my card. But if I do leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I'm going to get started today with the stampings and I will be using the Santa mug from this not too shabby Merry Mug stamp set. I'm stamping onto a piece of Express It blending cardstock, and I will be stamping with VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink and heat embossing with clear powder. I set up my cardstock in my Mini Misty, and I will end up stamping two of the mugs just in case when I'm coloring one. If something goes way outside the lines or I don't like the way it works, I have the second one. I got it set up in that lower right hand corner. I did ink it up a couple times for each of the images and you'll notice there it was a little like black splotch in the middle of my mug. Now because of this I did not use a presser tool in case that would transfer to my cardstock. I probably had a little bubble underneath there and it just caught some of that ink. If you notice that happening to yours you can always clean off the stamp and replace it just make sure that the back is completely flat and there are no air bubbles underneath it. I did forget to mention that I prep my cardstock with the anti-static powder tool just so when I go to put the powder on and melt it it only sticks to where I want it. And speaking of putting the powder on and melting it I did that next and after about 30 seconds of heating up my tool, I like to heat up the back first, bring it to the front and melt the powder. And here is a look at that all finished. I set the stamped piece to the side and brought in some products for stenciling. I will be using the Snow Flurries background stencil from Not Too Shabby and I have a piece of white cardstock that I cut to 4 inches square and for my ink on this I'm using Tailored Expressions Blueberry ink with the coordinating blending brush. To stencil onto and hold my cardstock in place, I'm using this Tim Holtz mat. I think it's from Ranger. And I did go ahead and just tack my stencil in place just in case that wanted to move. Then I inked up my brush and I blended that. Now while I work on that, I want to tell you all about today's collaboration hop. 
As I mentioned before, I am not the only one sharing today. There are a team of us who will be sharing cards or tags or other products that were inspired by Amy's creation. To see what everyone has created, you can click on the hashtag in the title and give that a try. But if it's not working, shortly after everybody's videos go live, I will have a playlist in that description box below. If the playlist isn't quite ready and you want to go ahead and hop along and the hashtag isn't working, everybody's channel is also linked in the description box. I know that everybody is going to love for you to stop by, see how they were inspired, and leave them some love. If you're inspired to play along, we would love to see what you create. You can share here on YouTube or over on Instagram using the hashtag, hashtag I was oh so inspired. Once I was done stenciling, I brought in my photo trimmer and cut this piece in half to 2 inches wide by 4 inches tall. Originally I was thinking about maybe making two cards with this, but I did only end up cutting one half into those angles, and I just used the edge of my trimmer and kind of eyeballed the angles I liked. On the first one I didn't quite like that second angle, so I just put it back in my trimmer, shaved a little more off, and then that one was much better. Using the ink that was left on my blending brush, I went over this piece one time just to add a little more color. When I color my mug in later, you'll notice that it's a darker blue than what the ink blended ended up being on the stencil. So I thought to help pull some of that in, I would use that blueberry ink again and the medium snowflake from the stamp set, and I just went in and did some free range stamping of more snowflakes. I did pick it up every once in a while to see what I thought, and I did end up adding a few more snowflakes until I thought the piece was nicely filled. To go with the snowflake theme, I brought in a cuddle bug embossing folder that had snowflakes on it, and using a piece of white cardstock that was four by five and a quarter, I took this off screen to add some texture. To color my image today, I will be using my daughter's Olo markers. Thank you, Presley, for letting me use these. I will list the individual colors in the description box below. Some of you might already know that over this past weekend, I attended Stamp Joy in Des Moines, Iowa that's hosted by Tailored Expressions, and one of the classes we took was all about Olo markers. It was taught by Lori Craig, who is an expert with the markers. She works for the company that makes them, and we learned lots of helpful tips. You'll notice here that I have put two of my markers together. They're held together with a connector ring, and I am leaving the caps off on the side. Lori let us know that if you're going to be coloring with two markers like this and you're going to go, be going back and forth between the colors to leave those lids off. I guess if you cap and recap and cap and recap while you're coloring, these markers can kind of sneeze on your image. And I definitely didn't want that to happen, so I made sure to leave those off. One end of my marker is a lighter version of the other end, and I started by coloring in where I wanted the shadows and then blended that into the open area with the lighter end of the marker. If you want to know more about our experience at Stamp Joy, I will link the replay of our live recap in the description box below, and I will also be coming out with a vlog series that tells more about it. I've done this in the past, some of you have probably watched them, and it is so much fun, so I hope that you'll check it out. Once I had this all colored, I took it over to my brother's scan and cut and had that do the die cutting. I did realize I forgot to color the handle of my mug, so I did do that quickly. Off camera, I got out a top fold card base for today's card, and now since all the pieces are ready, we're going to get the layout figured out and get the card put together. I played around a little bit and decided I liked the mug at the top, so I added adhesive to the back of the embossed piece and the stenciled piece and got those on my card front. And for the mug, I had added some foam tape off camera to give a little lift. To finish off the card, which I won't show on screen, I added some red gems to the front and on the inside I added a sentiment and a scrap of that stenciled piece to the bottom. And here are some close-up looks at the finished card. 
I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's card. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to hop along to the rest of the collaboration team's videos by using the hashtag in the title or the links in the description box. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.